Okay, today's webinar, we have a class member here ask about their seven needle machine and uh, what they were doing is they were sewing on something, uh, 3D puffs to be specific. And uh, what he had said is that the, uh, the presser foot had accidentally caught on something uh, on, on the 3D foam and he broke thread, broke needle. But now once he's replaced the needle, and he's replaced the thread uh, and uh, sewing. This is breaking uh, thread constantly, his needle number five. So going through the basic troubleshooting steps, um, if you are having thread breaks, uh, no matter how complex your problem is, always refer to the basics first. So with thread breaks, uh, number one is make sure the thread path is correct. So for needle five, make sure everything's running correctly through the thread break sensor um, and then through your tensioners, uh, down uh, through the slot here in your check spring, take up lever, and then down uh, through these pink grommets, in this case of this needle, and then through the eye of the needle. Anything wrong here can result in thread break, so check carefully, and um, don't be afraid to reference the additional uh, thread, the threads off to the side, uh, so that you can make sure everything's correct. So, and also when you're uh, making sure the path is correct, uh, pull on that thread, and make sure that you can see, um, say this is needle five, make sure you can see this wheel turning for every inch of thread uh, that passes through that wheel, that this should be reactive because this should, is telling the machine that the thread is not broken and it's flowing. If this wheel stops turning, then um, the machine is sewing, then the machine will immediately stop and indicate a thread break, whether it's real or not. So make sure that wheel is turning. So thread path, and then also make sure that um, if you have any doubts to change the needle. And when you change the needle, make sure that it's oriented correctly front back. So commercial embroidery needles have a front and a back. And also the needle, if this is the eye of the needle, make sure it's angled straight on or very slightly to the right. Don't angle it even slightly to the left or you will have uh, shredding or thread breaks. So, those are the basics to get out of the way if you're a new operator. If you follow those, uh, if you don't have any incidents, then 99% of the time, then you're off to the races. Uh, the other thing that you wanna make sure, um, of, of course, is thread. Make sure you're using high quality thread. And um, if you've got new thread, um, then that eliminates a lot of possibilities. But um, whatever it is, um, what you can do is take the cone, whatever color you're sewing, and move it to another location. So if we're on needle five, try four or three, and then run that same section of the design. And, and if you have no thread breaks uh, um, with that same cone, then it eliminates the possibility that, uh, or minimizes the possibility that it was the thread itself. So now we're getting down to the actual problem um, in this particular incident. So. Uh, he has eliminated all those possible causes by checking the thread path. He's an experienced operator. He knows to uh, check the orientation of the needle, knows to check the thread break sensor wheel, and has moved the cone. So the other thing to look for um, is that you're in troubleshooting thread breaks is you want to look through everything that the thread is going to pass over. Not only the thread path here, uh, but the needle, the presser foot, but it also drops down through the needle plate. And then uh, when it makes a stitch, the rotary hook will grab that thread and spin that around. So all these are suspect, except the fact that he's tried other locations and they're sewing fine. So the parts that are, uh, the parts that touch that thread that are common to all of them can be eliminated. In this case, it's the needle bar, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the needle plate, uh, the rotary hook, any of these things are eliminated as suspect. So we're rapidly uh, uh, narrowing it down to either something going on with the needle bar itself uh, and not the needle or the presser foot. So the next logical thing to check that's easy um, is to check the needle depth. And uh, there is a separate video available for this, but basically uh, when you buy your machine, uh, make sure you have a needle depth uh, When you buy your machine, make sure you have a needle depth gauge. This may or may not come with your kit. It does come with a larger uh, uh, commercial machines. And um, this lets you check how uh, 
Well, this lets you check to make sure that the needle is, is coming down as low it, as it needs to to engage the stitches. Needle bars are spring loaded and right up and down. Uh, and they're held in place at a certain height uh, inside the moving head uh, by uh, a screw that just holds them with, with a little bit of friction. So if it hits it with a hard enough impact, that could slide. And so that often it'll be pushed upwards and then you may even be able to visibly see that needle bar um, is riding at the wrong height. So the way to check this um, is to go into your machine and go into the main menu and go to other and maintenance. This is covered separately in another video, so we'll just cover this procedure um, fairly uh, quickly, just uh, just to go through the motions. So uh, bear with me here. Let's. Uh, so in troubleshooting, checking needle depth, we'll go to the main menu, and then go to other and then go to maintenance. And the maintenance screen's sole purpose is to move the different parts of the sewing machine in slow motion. So you can check to make sure everything's aligned correctly. In this case, the needle bar. So what you wanna do is first press the button next to the word jump, so those are two green arrows, that changes this to drive. And basically what this does is, it enables the plus button here when you hold it to move the sewing machine in super slow motion so you can check that all the parts are, are, are going to their design uh, locations at the right time. So what we're gonna do now is advance the sewing uh, machine, just like turning the wheel on the side of a sewing machine by pressing and uh, holding the plus. And what will happen is everything will be spinning. You can see stuff going on here. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and cut to uh, the, um, the needle bar and the rotor area itself. So you can see what's happening when I'm hitting plus. So what you can see here uh, that's relevant for our view is that I'm pressing the plus button and holding it and you can see the needle bar is going up and down. And what I'm gonna do is at least get it partially down, get the bar bottom case out of the way. And then we wanna continue this down until the foot's about as low as it can get, and you can try and stop that by hand. Uh, just you can keep it going around long enough uh, until you can time it to get pretty low. That's pretty close. And then what you can see here is that um, on the screen, if you can read it, is that we're at angle three three two. We want to ideally try to get to uh, five. So th these uh, this number is the degrees on a compass from zero to three hundred fifty nine degrees or three hundred sixty. Um, and there's a circle uh, or a wheel at the back of the machine that this is telling you what degree that, that wheel is at. So we want to stop it as close as zero degrees uh, or five degrees, which is five degrees past 360 as possible. 332 is actually pretty close. So we just want to get approximately there. And that's basically jives with what uh, we're seeing here. So we got the needle about as close as we can get. And then we're going to turn it the rest of the way um, to five degrees. And uh, the way you're gonna do that is you need a three millimeter Allen wrench that comes with your machine. So you got one of these um, and or any three millimeter hex wrench. And you'll see this in the more detailed video, but basically go to the back of the machine. There's a black rubber cap about two inches in diameter and you remove it, it looks like this. And behind that rubber cap is a wheel with uh, 360 degrees worth of marks on it. And I'm just basically going to turn this by hand so that I'm at exactly five degrees. So I'm going to turn it. You'll see it won't move that much. It's 330. I can see it here. And now I am at five. So you can see none of that really moved that much. But that's the test depth or the test position um, where the needle should line up with the needle depth gauge. So basically the needle's down through a certain amount. And it's partially poking into the basket of the bottom case. And you want to push this in on into the spindle where the bottom case goes. And as long as you can get the needle to scrape the top of this soft plastic piece, then it's it's okay. And you can hear that. Now, if I just do it back and forth, no problem. Uh, you can't hear it. But even if I just push it upwards a little bit and get it to contact, and hopefully you can hear that in the audio, then that needle depth is good. So 
It's too low if you can't get this all the way on and it's, it's blocked by the needle. It's too high, the needle bar is too high if no matter how you move this, you can't get it to contact. So in Kevin's case, he found out that uh, our, our customer who's having this problem, Kevin found out that he can get it to scrape, so that eliminates the needle bar. But the nice thing is, uh, because uh, we're checking also the presser foot position, um, we're right there where the presser foot needs to be. The presser foot position needs to be, uh, can be checked by moving the shaft to five to zero degrees. We're at five now, so we'll just move to zero. You'll see, really, we can check it here because I'm going to move from five to zero. And you can see it really doesn't move much. So I'm going to the back of my machine, going from five to zero. And there I moved. You guys probably didn't see anything. Very little movement. But at five degrees, or I'm sorry, at zero degrees, the pressure of your foot should be less than a dime's thickness off of the needle plate. This can also be driven up. Um, it probably doesn't cause thread breaks but uh, by being driven up, um, but it's good to check it here and make sure it's not riding too high. For example, if the foot was so high that like this, that's clearly more than a dime's width, then you're gonna get looping. So um, if it gets driven up too high, then you can adjust the foot from the screw right here, which is adjust the height, you can loosen that and slide the presser foot up or down to the correct height, then retighten the screw again. But really what we're checking here also is that the foot is not bent, like Kevin had mentioned, to the point that it's contacting the needle. So it's actually in slow-mo, basically stopped in the middle of a stitch. So you can see, is the needle contacting the foot? Is the foot bent in a way that it's, it's um, it's off to the side and hitting it, hitting it, is it not parallel? There's also a possibility there could be a burr here. So that's where I think the problem is since he's eliminated everything else. So what if we decide that we need to replace this? So to replace the presser foot, so we'll back out a little bit. Um, what you'll wanna do is we're gonna have to remove this face plate or actually just loosen it and swing it out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this all the way back up. There's a button here that says end. So when I hit okay, it says C point, then you're gonna see that the uh, needle will go back up automatically to its, its retracted position and so will the foot. Now let's go ahead and uh, loosen this. This is gonna be the same both for the seven needle and for the new 12 needle uh, Voyager HCS3. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen uh, a screw on the side of the head. Um, on the 12 needle, it's a screw right here. On this, then uh, there's two screws right here and two screws right here. So you don't have to remove them, we'll just loosen them with a regular Phillips screwdriver. And when you do this and it swings out, obviously you're going to have to risk unthreading the lower part of the head. Um, if you want to uh, simplify things and you can if you want to simplify things, then you can pull some extra thread down so that uh, you lose a little bit of thread, but you're saving yourself the time of having to re-thread the needles because then you can just pull it tight again. The game, of course, don't get tangled um, as you're putting everything back together, but if you're careful, it'll save you a lot of time. All right, so just loosen these screws. And now the head can swing out towards me. There is a lip. Um, this lower faceplate has a lip that catches underneath the upper faceplate. So I'm going to swing the bottom out towards me. And then you can see the lip. I'm going to go ahead and thread this since it's only seven colors. And it's hang going to be hanging by the cable that powers the LED lights. So um, I'll kind of get this loose here. And um, be careful uh, and you don't have to detach the cable because you can see the only thing hang on that's holding it now is the cable. And it's okay to hang it by the cable as long as you don't put it through any of these stress. So <clears throat> to uh, replace a presser foot on the seven needle machine, you'll want to remove uh, this retention bar here and um, you'll uh, want to remove the screw. So let's uh, just for simplicity's sake, since this is it, um, out of the way of the uh, of the faceplate, we'll do needle one. 
just so you can see it. So, um, so we'll go ahead and remove these uh, retention bars here. And this is free enough, I can actually just, I can leave the rest on. I'm going to do the same uh, for the upper bar. And let's see if we can get it out with just these two screws, uh, out or, or loosened. Actually, I'll just go ahead and remove them all the way, just to get them out of the way. And basically just remove the screw here, the adjustment screw. And you can see the presser hook completely drops off. And there's your presser foot. So, and then to, uh, to reattach your presser foot, just um, perform uh, the procedure in the re reverse order. Slide this on up uh, underneath the retention bar. And then um, put the, uh, and let's go ahead and do that since it's simple enough. Uh, we don't have to drag the video on any longer than we have to. So underneath the appropriate retention, part of the retention bar, line up the slot uh, uh, with where the set screw is going to be. And make note of where the, you've got an oval hole here that allows you to uh, make the press foot higher or lower. Put them in about, put this at about the same position as the rest since it's very likely that's the correct adjustment position. Put your set screw on. It helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver, but otherwise just hold it in place. You do want to get this as tight as you can because this does set the height and it's going to be going through all the impacts um, as the machine makes stitches. Let's see if that as close as I can to the correct height. And then just replace your retention screw, your screws on the retention bar and then pretend we did that and then go ahead and remount the lower face plate again hooking that lip at the top underneath the uh the lower face plate and you also want to work to get the threads out of the way so that they don't get tangled in right there and that's basically it so uh, i'm just going to get this back on here just for the sake of the video and we'll take any questions that you guys have because we didn't remove the screws then this can just kind of pop right back on here And that's basically the procedure for replacing the presser foot if you find that uh, needs to take care of the problem. Thank you.